Thank you, Prime Minister, for sharing your thoughts since you have been part of the history, the modern history of Nepal. So we hear it right from an actor. Uh, Nepal, as you may or may not know, has been dear to my heart because I was instrumental and honored by being a drafter of the interim constitution, which was interim by definition to bring peace to Nepal. Uh, and so I'm very glad to welcome you again to Colombia. I'm noted for asking a lot of questions, but I'm going to restrain because students want to ask questions. But I will take the liberty of being the moderator of asking three questions. And they're going to be pragmatic questions, at least two of them. And democracy has to be sought, has to be lived. But in order to live it, you also have to develop, as you say, give opportunity to the next generation as well as the present. However, you have a challenge. You're landlocked, which is, you have Mount Everest, but you're still landlocked. The result of this also has been that per year, according to the statistics, one million people leave Nepal every year, and 100,000 students around the world, including here at Columbia, we enjoy them, we appreciate them, but your country needs them. So the challenge is your education and development. So what steps will you be taking in the near future to keep, make it a home for the million who are leaving, as well as the 100,000 that have left to get education elsewhere. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, I talked about the history of Nepal, the political history and the history of economic development as well. And uh, on the question of economic development, when we are talking about, uh, it is related to the education, the health, uh, job opportunities, and the economic other uh, conditions of the country. And without improving appropriate and capable human resources, we cannot develop the country uh, particularly. It is not good that our young population is uh, migrated for education and for job opportunities. Of course, there are not that much uh, appropriate job opportunities in Nepal, so uh, most of the youth who are going outside, they are going for job. So they will be back. People talk about uh, the rush in the airport. Youths are going outside, outside, outside. But they don't take uh, any account of the people who are coming back too. Equally, people are going outside and coming back too. But the number of uh, people who are going outside is larger than who are returning back. Of course, who are going outside for job uh, seeking jobs, they are coming back. But uh, those who are going for other purposes, for education, for other good, uh, better job opportunities, they are not uh, coming back so soon. Maybe later on they will be back. And. Uh, we are not talking, as your professor, you asked, that uh, what we shall do. We'll not talk about uh, job opportunities, because job opportunities do not come without any source. But we have to emphasize uh, on the entrepreneurship. So we are trying to develop entrepreneurship and a startup projects and trying to attract the youth and they can put their uh, certificate and get loan and uh, as well as uh, the women they can without any certificate or anything they can ask for loan and they can get loan for small businesses in this way we are trying to create new of star uh, startups and uh, entrepreneurship new small entrepreneurship and at the same time, very bitter fact is that our population out among our population, more than 60% of our population is still engaged in agricultural system, which is very bad and traditional one. So we have to modernize agriculture. 
we have to commercialize agriculture and mechanize. So we can um, increase the income through uh, agricultural uh, jobs too. So in this way and providing good education, I think there is not that much uh, poor situation in the country about the education. But uh, there is another type of attraction of outside because uh, facilities comparatively are less inside country, inside Nepal, than outside. So there is one attraction also. But we are trying to uh, hold them inside country because without them, without youth, we cannot transform the country into a situation of LDC to developing country and tomorrow and a developed one. Another question which I have, you've been blessed because you have hydro, you have water. However, if you look into the future, like the rest of the world, climate change is on us and your glaciers are melting, yeah. which means that your major resource or uh, hydro, clean, may not be with you. How are you anticipating meeting this challenge? The thank glacier... You. The thank you, Professor. You raised very important and very timely question. It is very relevant in the present time. Uh, most of the people uh, talk about the uh, rising of sea level and uh, global warming, etc. First, we have to understand, and the entire globe must understand that the mountains, and particularly the mountains in Nepal, they are the location, the situation of our mountains, and the role of the of our mountains to maintain. Uh, climate balance, an ecosystem, is especially uh, important because those are between the line of Cancer and line of Capricorn. That is a hot area. Yeah. The sun goes up to Cancer, uh, line of Cancer and up to Capricorn. This is hot area. And being situated at the hot area, and those mountains are holding snows, ice, because of the altitude. They are in the hot place, but there is ice. And there is the largest cooling system and charging system of the world, recharge system of the water, and cooling the earth, and cooling the air of that. And mountains are not only important for Nepal, but for the entire world, for the entire globe, they are important. So, I would like to draw attention of the world that uh, if we talk about uh, the uh, raise of sea levels and um, the danger of sinking of small island countries, uh, we have to go to the source of the problem. We cannot treat at the end, but we have to go to the source. And that source is the mountain. If the mountain hold enough ice, and melt slowly, then they can flow the rivers, create rivers, recharge system, they can smoothly. But if the sea, again there is one ecosystem between the sea and mountains. If the seas are polluted and the polluted uh, cloud goes to the mountain and it collides with the mountain and that contributes to melt the ice. That is another. And uh, fire in the forest, that is another problem. And in our region particularly, uh, some months before there was a report, uh, worldwide uh, there was uh, uh, known that uh, the most polluted city was Kathmandu at one time. It was for about uh, one week or two weeks about, because after the harvesting, after harvesting the wheat, the hay of wheat was burnt, and the cloud and the smoke and the dust was spread. That created very dangerous pollution in the air. 
and that is salty and that is acidic and that goes to collide with the mountains and the ice melts that's the problem so uh, until now in my opinion we are contributing 64 66 46 46% of our land for forest as well as our mountains are 70% 46 70 63 and rivers and ponds etc and lakes including more than 70% of land we are contributing for the climate issues so that is the huge contribution of nepal and we are conscious we are aware about the importance of uh, this issue and for the future and when we talk about the future we talk about uh, uh, planet and people we have to save the planet we have to save the people and suffer and safer earth and safety of human beings there are some aspects i don't want to explain now because it will be longer so as your you ask me provision on the question of uh, climate change that's our opinion and uh, we are conscious about that and we urge the entire world to be conscious and treat at the point of origin from where the problem is from. Well said. Although we're supposed to start Q&A, I have one more question for you. Our students, many of them are entrepreneurs. Can you tell them why they should join you in Nepal as an entrepreneur? What message would you like to give them? I would like to request whoever are entrepreneurs or who are not, I would like to suggest them to be entrepreneur. And there are opportunities for a startup. There are other opportunities in Nepal too. Speaking in the real sense. So I would like to and uh, America is developed, not because it was rich. It's developed and become, become rich. Now China also become rich. Not because it uh, was rich and developed, but they developed and become rich. So we have, we cannot run away. We cannot escape from the problems. We have to develop our country. We have to provide, establish and provide good governance to the people, to the nation, rule of law. And that rule must be just rule. Agreed. So, just rule and rule of law. Power. And there must be opportunity, not only for a small chunk of people, but for all. And the benefits which earn the nation, that should be distributed equally. That is my opinion. So, young people who are Nepali students, young people, they can return to the country, return back, and they can contribute to develop.